Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. This is episode 13 of Questions and Answers. In this episode, I'll be answering one camera-related question and four questions about Lightroom. We're going to jump right into it with that camera-related question. It's from Ted. On the body of my Nikon D7000, there is a small circle with a dash through it. What does that mean? Okay, what Ted is talking about is this little graphic that you'll find probably on almost all cameras. It's a little circle with a line through it. And that is the focal plane indicator. And on a DSLR or on a mirrorless camera, any digital camera, that's to indicate to you where inside your camera where the sensor is. That's the face of the sensor is about right there along the camera. On a film camera, that's going to be where the film emulsion is. So that's exactly where the film is on a film camera. Well, why is that important? Well, two reasons. If you have a cam uh, camera lens and you look at the lens and it says that its minimum focus distance, let's say for the sake of argument, is one meter. Where is that meter measured from? Is it measured from the front of the lens, the middle of the lens, back of the lens? Well, it's measured right from this line that focal plane indicator, that is where you measure that one meter. So the minimum focus distance is measured from there. Also, it would come in handy if you use hyperfocal distance for landscape photography. Usually you would use an app, but there are charts. You would dial in your focal length and your aperture, and the app will return to you a focus distance, the hyperfocal distance that you should focus to. And for the sake of argument, let's say it's 2.4 meters. Well, you would measure 2.4 meters from this line to get the perfect hyperfocal distance. So that's why it's there and how it comes in handy. Now, the next question is a Lightroom question from Ivan. Why can't I import all photos from a folder? Some are grayed out. How do I get them to open up? You know, I get this question quite a bit. I mean, quite a bit, at least once a week. And I'll just go into the import dialog real quick. And I set this up by putting an SD card in my computer and just putting some images on it. And as you can see, they're grayed out. They're grayed out because Lightroom thinks you have them in your Lightroom catalog already. And this most commonly happens for those of you that shoot JPEG. So you shoot JPEG, you did some processing on the image, then you exported that processed JPEG with the same file name, then you tried to re-import that JPEG back into Lightroom and it has the same file name and Lightroom thinks it's the same image. Well, you could get around that by going to this checkbox right here, don't import suspected duplicates. And if you turn that checkbox off, you'll see they're not grayed out anymore and you can import them. Now, whether or not you really want to do that and keep doubling or tripling up images that you import into Lightroom is really up to you. I personally don't. I shoot raw, so there's rarely an instance where I'll be importing the same raw file twice into my Lightroom. So I don't really worry about that. Uh, another question I get sometimes is people say that they don't see any images there at all and they know that they have images on their SD card or images on their computer. They could see them outside of Lightroom, but the import dialog doesn't show them. That's because Lightroom thinks they're already in Lightroom and you have new photos checked right here. So just go to all photos and then you'll see them and then go to don't import, import suspected duplicates and you should be able to see them and import them if you really want to import them. Next question is from Laura. Where do you recommend my Lightroom catalog be located? I recommend that you uh, put it in the default location where Lightroom wants to put it which is on your local drive. It will run fastest from your local drive and it's easiest to find. Usually it's in your pictures folder, either pictures in a Mac computer or your pictures uh, folder on a Windows computer. It's easiest to find. Just back it up. Make sure you back it up to an external hard drive and also back it up to the cloud. That way, if anything happens to the external drive and your computer at the same time, you still have it backed up to the cloud. So, uh, you know, as simple as that. Just leave it on your local drive and I think it'll work fine. This next question is from Kirill. I recently found my hard drive to be near full. 
I found my Lightroom cache to be taking up most of the space. I deleted it to solve the issue. Is there a way to have Lightroom automatically delete and control the cache? Yeah, if we go up to Preferences. Now on a Mac, Preferences is under the Lightroom menu at the top. In a Windows computer, it would be under Edit. So you go to Preferences, and I think it's File Handling, yeah. File handling, almost all the way down, you'll see camera raw cache settings. See, I have my maximum size set to 40 gigabytes. I think by default that might be might be one gigabyte. I'm not really, I don't really remember. But on this iMac, I have a three terabyte hard drive, so it's a really large hard hard drive. So I could get away with a very large cache. So set your maximum cache size, and also from this same dialog you could purge the cache and you could also choose where you want the cache to reside. I don't recommend putting it on an external drive just because it will be a little slower and it will slow down your Lightroom. So have it on the local drive uh, and I have it in the default location. But you could periodically open up this dialog and purge the cache and also you'll see there's a video cache setting as well with um, a maximum size and a button to purge that cache as well. So you could do it from within Lightroom, and you could do it periodically, or you could just set the maximum cache size to something that's manageable for your specific hard drive, you know, and it will automatically keep that cache size at that maximum size or smaller, so you won't really have to worry about it anymore. Okay, the next question is from Ralph. In my understanding, DNG includes all the changes is done, changes is, <laughs> all the changes done in Lightroom by means I don't need an XMP file. Yes, that's true. If you convert your images to DNG, the one of the things touted about an advantage of DNG is that the edits get written directly to the DNG file. But Ralph found something out here that he accidentally deleted a processed DNG file in Lightroom. He, I'm sorry if there's misspelling. Actually, I just kind of copy and paste from the actual email, and sometimes I don't really proofread them. So I, I apologize for these misspelled words now and then. Um, after restoring from the recycle bin, I expected to get back a process file, and he should expect to get that because, by definition, a DNG file will store the edits inside the DNG file. But this is not the case. It's really an imported file now. Why is that? Well, that's one of the secrets about Lightroom people don't know, that even though you're converting them to DNG, Lightroom still won't write the edits inside the DNG file unless you tell it to. It's writing those edits to the catalog, and that's what Ralph find out, found out. So, to do this isn't entirely clear and it's very confusing for people. Go up to the catalog settings. On a Mac it's again under that Lightroom tab or Lightroom menu. If you have a PC it's under the edit menu. So go down to catalog settings and this is where it's confusing. See where it says automatically write changes into XMP? Check that. That makes you think it's going to create an XMP file, and, and I'm assuming that Ralph doesn't want that. He wants the image, the edits written right to the DNG file. Well, it will. When you have DNGs, it will not actually create an XMP file. It will write the edits to the DNG. Adobe should be more clear on this. So to repeat, if you convert your images, your, let's say, uh, you know, uh, Canon CR2 images, you know, RAW files, or your Nikon NEF files, or whatever, and you convert them to DNG, you, ha you should go to your catalog settings and click this box to auto automatically write the changes into XMP. It will not create that sidecar XMP file for those DNG files, but it will write the changes directly to the, uh, to the DNG. So, I hope that made sense because that is confusing and it is, in my opinion, um, something that should be a uh, default, a default check there so that you automatically are writing those edits to the DNG file because a lot of people expect their edits to be in that DNG file and they might 
do a bunch of edits to a to a DNG file and then send that DNG file off to maybe a, an editor or something and the edits aren't there because they're in the Lightroom catalog. So make sure you check that box and you should be good to go. All right, that's it for this episode of Questions and Answers. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I'll talk to you guys soon.